Which of the solar system's moons has seasons? Other planets in the solar system, except Earth, suffer those periodic climate variations that we name seasons, as we learned in our last video, how the seasons are on the other planets in the solar system. Seasons on other worlds, on the other hand, are certainly extremely different from what we have here on Earth. Nonetheless, the basic differentiation pattern is the same for all planets. Simply put, when a planet is in its orbit with its north pole facing the sun, the summer solstice is when the sun reaches its highest point on the horizon and the winter solstice is when it reaches its lowest point. Several factors influence the creation of seasons on a planet, the most important of which, all else being equal, is the tilt of the planet's axis of rotation. The 23.5 degrees tilt of the Earth is the primary cause of the climatic changes we see between summer and winter. Planets with lower inclinations may have minor variations, while planets with greater inclinations may experience more drastic variations. The average distance from the Sun and the eccentricity of the orbit are next in importance. Our orbit is approximately circular, so perihelion and aphelion are not too far apart, but other planets' orbits are much more elliptical, Mercury and, to a lesser extent, Mars, therefore seasonal fluctuations may be more pronounced. In general, the changes are more pronounced for planets that are closer to the Sun. However, none of these features could achieve it on their own. Without the presence of an atmosphere, everything would be reduced to seasonal temperature variations, with none of the weather effects, winds, pressure, precipitation, etc., that contribute to the establishment of a climate. If the Earth did not have an atmosphere, it would experience severe temperature variations similar to those seen on the Moon, making it difficult to assess even a 23-degree tilted body seasonal changes. However, considering the subject of this film, the question at this point can only be, do the moons of the solar system have seasons? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is that the presence or absence of an atmosphere is significant. Why is this so? Because all of the larger moons rotate about axes that are nearly exactly orthogonal to the orbital plane. As a result, none of them have the axis tilt feature, and the only cyclic weather fluctuations can be generated by the more or less dense atmosphere. Is it true that our moon has seasons? Definitely not, in my opinion. If anything, they are far less prominent than the seasons on Earth, and this is due to two factors. In actuality, the lunar axis is only 1.5 degrees inclined, allowing for no substantial fluctuations in illumination and insulation throughout the year. Furthermore, our natural satellite has virtually no air cover. As a result, temperature shifts between day and night cause the most difference in weather conditions on the surface. Because diurnal variations outnumber seasonal variations, they are invisible and unlikely to be measured. Even if the Earth did not have an atmosphere, it would endure severe temperature variations similar to those seen on the Moon, making seasonal changes difficult to observe despite having such a skewed axis. On the Moon, an illuminated area at the equator is around plus 130 degrees Celsius, while a shadowed area is approximately minus 150 degrees Celsius. A person sleeping on his back on the Moon would be heated to 130 degrees Celsius on the exposed side and cooled to minus 150 degrees Celsius on the back. This temperature swing does not occur on Earth due to the presence of the atmosphere and seas. At a global average temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, the sun's rays heat the atmospheric gas envelope, which redistributes the heat. Furthermore, the thermoregulatory presence of bodies of water absorbs heat in the summer and releases it in the winter. However, no liquid water has ever been discovered on the moon. To summarize, environmental variables on the Moon are not seasonal, but are virtually entirely influenced by temperature differences between day and night. Okay, so this was entirely logical and predicted, but what about the other moons? We bypass Mars and its two tiny satellites and arrive to the Jovian system, where we can't help but wonder if the massive Galilean moons are impacted by the seasons. 
To begin, all four of them, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto have essentially no tilt in their orbital plane, orbit Jupiter in nearly perfectly circular orbits, and are almost completely devoid of atmosphere. The absence of these three criteria instantly emphasizes the point, none of Jupiter's huge moons display any traits that support the existence of a seasonal cycle. Temperature changes on their surfaces, like our moon, are mostly governed by the day-slash-night cycle. For example, the temperature on Io, the most active globe in the solar system, fluctuates from around minus 143 degrees Celsius on the lighted side to about minus 180 degrees Celsius on the shaded side, with hundreds of volcanoes and lava fountains spouting tens of kilometers high. Europa, the smallest of the Galilean moons, slightly smaller than our moon, but still the sixth biggest in the solar system, has these characteristics, an essentially non-existent atmosphere, an axis of rotation perpendicular to the ecliptic, and a nearly circular orbit. As a result, there is no seasonality in the climate and only minor temperature changes, with minimums of minus 220 degrees Celsius and maximums of minus 150 degrees Celsius. Even Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system and the only moon with its own magnetic field, must contend with a climate governed by daily temperature swings ranging from minus 203 degrees Celsius to minus 121 degrees Celsius. The most distant of the Medicean satellites, Callisto, faces the same fate, no seasonal fluctuations and temperatures ranging from minus 107 degrees Celsius to minus 192 degrees Celsius between day and night. To find Titan, the only moon in fact, the only object in the solar system after Earth and Mars that can display true seasons, you must first travel to Saturn and then to Titan. Titan is one of our solar system's most intriguing moons, the second largest after Ganymede. With its thick atmosphere and distinctive geological features, Saturn's moon has long piqued the interest of astronomers and astrobiologists. Titan, unlike any other moon, has a climate model that is very comparable to Earth's, with well-defined seasons and weather conditions that can result in clear, foggy, very windy, or very rainy days in this faraway world. With dunes, rivers, estuaries, lakes, and oceans on its surface. Keeping in mind that we are still discussing an extraterrestrial habitat with an average temperature of minus 180 degrees Celsius. But what causes these seasonal changes? What factors determine Titan's climate, and how do they interact with one another? First and foremost, Titan's axis of rotation is inclined 27 degrees from the ecliptic, which is enough to provide fairly well-defined seasons. Of course, not like ours, starting with the duration. Titan, together with Saturn, takes 29.5 Earth years to complete a full orbit around the Sun. As a result, its seasons are significantly longer than ours. In fact, each of them has a lifespan of about 7.4 years. Titan saw the Northern Hemisphere's last summer solstice in 2017, and it is now in the midst of its fall season. The Sun has an impact on Titan's climate, but not as much as it does on Earth. Titan receives just approximately 1% of the sunlight that Earth receives due to its distance from the Sun. However, even a little amount of solar radiation is sufficient to determine the moon's environment. Titan's atmosphere is heated by the sun's radiation, which circulates it and creates winds that can reach speeds of up to 500 kilometers per hour. Titan's weather patterns, including clouds, rain, and storms, are similarly determined by the sun's energy. But wait, there's more. Titan also has an extremely dense atmosphere made largely of nitrogen with a trace of methane that can play an important role in regulating its climate. And by dense, we mean that Saturn's massive satellite is surrounded by a gaseous envelope that is as much as 1.5 times the pressure of Earth at sea level at ground level. Titan's atmosphere is only slightly less dense than that of Venus in the entire solar system. The same layer of nitrogen and methane controls the quantity of sunlight that reaches the moon's surface, screening away damaging UV radiation that would otherwise harm any potential life on the moon. 
methane in the atmosphere condenses and becomes liquid at minus 180 degrees Celsius, resulting in precipitation that produces rivers and lakes on the surface. It should also be mentioned that while rainfall on Titan is not as common as it is on Earth, it can be rather abundant when it does occur. Needless to mention, Titan is the only object in the outer solar system and the only moon, apart from our own, that has ever been visited by a probe. Since Voyager 2 sailed by in 1989, no spacecraft has visited Triton. We're talking about Neptune's largest natural satellite, as well as one of the most massive in the entire solar system, ranking seventh behind Titan, the Moon, and Jupiter's four Galilean moons. Triton is also the only huge moon that orbits its planet in reverse, at a distance of around 355,000 kilometers and in slightly under six days. Because of its retrograde orbit and similar composition to Pluto, scientists believe Triton did not form with Neptune but rather an object from the Kuiper belt trapped by the solar system's most distant planet. In other words, it is a close relative of Pluto, with which it shares many surface characteristics. Telescopic observations from Earth verified the occurrence of seasonal cycles on Triton that occur every 40 years in 2010. It was spring when Voyager 2 explored Triton's southern hemisphere. With the summer solstice in 2000, fall should have only recently begun in the same hemisphere. This is due to the satellite's orbit being 129 degrees tilted relative to the plane of the ecliptic, or 39 degrees depending on which hemisphere is considered north. This means that Triton will alternately show two different hemispheres to the Sun during its 165-year revolution, causing an increase in temperature in the lit hemisphere. The presence of suspended gaseous stuff then amplifies the temperature difference between day and night. Triton likewise possesses a tenuous atmosphere of nitrogen, 70,000 times less dense than Earth's, which is most likely released from the same element's icy surface coating. Triton's atmosphere condenses and falls to the surface as nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide snow during the winter months. When sunlight strikes the surface more directly during the summer months, a thin surface layer evaporates, reforming the gaseous layer. Weak seasons that are scarcely apparent yet have documented environmental changes. This is all we had to say to you, dear friends, to wrap up our discussion of how seasons occur on the many bodies of the solar system. After all, only three things, Earth, Mars, and Titan, have more publicly exhibited seasons. Almost everywhere, the concept of the seasonal cycle is only detectable through instrumental means. It's difficult to believe that an object so far from the sun's light and warmth, with average temperatures of minus 235 degrees Celsius, could have the ingredients for a climate cycle to form. Even at Neptune's distance of 4.5 billion kilometers, the sun's force, reduced to one thousandth of what it hits our planet, makes itself known. But who knows, for a microorganism hidden in the ice of Europa or Triton, even a minor difference can mean summer or winter, and ultimately life or death. Don't you think so?